Hey guys, Simpson Mark Cruz here, and as you can see, we're back with the Crystal Palace Master League. In today's episode, we have three matches for you. Of course, we're out of the January transfer window now, we're now into February. So we're going into a little bit more of the hardcore part of the season. We're going to have a lot more games more often. So, of course, that is expected. So, in this first match of today's episode, we go up against Leicester City away from home. They actually saw they were starting Jamie Vardy, who's actually gone down in his overall rating from 75 to 74, which is a bit ridiculous. And they're playing some terrible goalkeeper, some some terrible goalkeeper and goal. For some reason not playing Casper Schmeichel, I don't know why, but with the with us being knocked out of the Capital One Cup in like what the last episode, the episode before that, we ended up having a lot more opportunities to play our best side over and over and over again. So it sort of helps with that sort of logic that we get to play our best side like every single game rather than having to play like some like terrible rated players. So in the first minutes of the match here, Kabai actually intercepts the ball. Runs past a couple of players, gives it into Yannick Belassi. Belassi down his left hand side as usual. Skins past one player like he's not even there. Belassi just continues to run in, eventually gets a strike weight, and it's a ridiculously good strike and it's a really good save from their goalkeeper. In the, 60, in the sixth minute of the match, Castanius gets thrown goal, gets a strike weight himself, and Kabai heads it off the bar, and then um, Belassi tries, uh, not Belassi, Zaha tries to get a strike weight, and he hits the bar himself. And in the 20th, 20th minute of the match, Jamie Vardy tries to get the ball this time. Maikon picks it up, gives it to Johan Kabai, and Kabai just runs from the halfway line. And no one stops him because Johan Kabai just never gets stopped. Gets a strike weight, and Kabai just pings it into the top corner from the edge of the box to give us a 1 0 lead against Leicester City. So, pretty decent so far. And in the 37th minute of the match, Belassi on the ball gives it into, um, into Castanos. And for, uh, fortunately for me, it actually gets straight through and eventually Belassi gets through on goal, pings it in the bottom corner for a finesse shot, really nice goal from Yannick Belassi to make it 2-0, and he goes off and does some ridiculous celebration in the corner, dancing like he's Michael Jackson, and I have no clue why. But into the second half, and Emery Chan, who come on as a substitute, plays it into Fisher down his left-hand side, Fisher just runs past a couple players, Eventually just let him get the opportunity, he runs into the box, pings it past the goalkeeper and just scores to give it, no, to score his first goal for the club essentially and make it 3-0 to us. He goes off to celebrate. I was happy for him but then I was like well he probably won't even play that much to be honest considering that Carrasco is easily better than him and Brahimi is also, well Brahimi is just terrible but some players I may or may not have to even get rid of already considering that I've already only played with him for a little bit but Brahimi is just, he just doesn't work in his team, he's too weak going forward but Anyway, in this, as you can see here, Joel Ward on the ball plays it, plays a really nice, actually, really nice across the field ball to Fisher. And the referee blows the whist final whistle for a 3-0 win against Leicester City, with us getting having 11 shots, 8 on target, they not even having a shot. So Kabai got man a match with 7.0 rating, and we go into the second match of the episode, which is against Manchester City. Now, the last time we faced Manchester City, they were sort of ridiculously good but they didn't really get that many chances going forward as you can see from their team they're not playing Joe Hart for some reason they're playing Willie Caballero in goal they've bought Matt Hummels which is just ridiculous not playing Fernandinho they're playing Fernando and Lasana Diada Kevin De Bruyne behind Aguero and Jesus Navas we're playing our strongest team as usual now we could potentially play when we play Castanos up front because of course Castanos is one of our better players so that makes perfect sense that's why we play him so Playing at the Etihad Stadium, we're playing, well, it's, it says it's like nice weather, but I mean, the weather doesn't really affect me, to be honest. I need to change their colours. It's the most annoying thing in the world. It's, it's so racist. that It makes it sound racist because it had two black people on the screen, but I need, need to change their uh, fan colour. Not being racist, god damn it, but I need to change their fan colour because their fan colour, it says it's like dark blue, when in reality there should be light blue. So, yeah, with that being said, the game kicked off, of course, as you'd expect, from Manchester City, trying to potentially get revenge, considering that, you know, we sort of did beat them uh, in, earlier on in the season. So in the 37th minute of the match, Alexander Kolarov hits a corner kick in, Chan heads it out straight to Zaha, Zaha gives it to Belassi, and Belassi just runs. Now, Belassi, when it comes to him running, no one's probably going to catch him at all. He just runs past a couple more players, because continues to run, and Caballero just doesn't really do much in terms of defending or anything. And I ended up hitting it wide, and I was really pissed off because I was like, well, that was the opportunity for me to actually get an opportunity and score and win the game. But in the 66th minute of the match, after me injuring, well, not injuring, but taking out Kevin De Bruyne, I thought I was getting a red card or something. Referee goes like, oh, no, no, blah, 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 and gives Rob Agnoli a yellow card. So I wasn't really too pissed off, to be honest. From the court, from the free kick, De Bruyne takes a free kick, a horrendous free kick from Kevin De Bruyne, comes to nothing. Lissana Diary does pick it up, and he does nothing with the ball. 
But in the 76th minute of the match, Chan on the ball, plays it into Camacho, Camacho into Balassi, Balassi just waits for Bolson to make a run down the left hand side. I try to cross it in first time, don't cross it in first time, eventually does come back out to this left hand side, which Bolton does cross in this time to the back post where Zaha is, and Zaha heads it past Willy Caballero to give us a 1-0 lead, a undeserved 1-0 lead to be honest, and basically makes it so that we could potentially win the game against Manchester City and get a double over them, both with 1-0 leads, which is just ridiculous to think. So in the 85th minute of the match, Camacho gets played for on goal and running at, at a Vincent Company like he's not there, tries to get a strike away, eventually does get a strike away but it goes near post and I should have far post, get nothing from the from the game. Eventually in the last minutes of the match, Zaha probably should have scored again with uh, Caballero making a really good save. But the referee blows the whistle as the ball gets cleared and we end up winning game 1-0 against Crystal Palace. But when you actually look uh, against Crystal Palace, for Crystal Palace against Manchester City, but when you look at the stats, I mean, to be honest the game was ridiculously close. And maybe we did deserve to win, but I mean a draw would have probably made more sense. But anyway, after the game against Manchester City, it comes up saying that James McArthur has turned into a general. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? And why is he a general? And I was like, what the hell? So, waited for a bit and it was like, James McArthur gives his, gives his all in every single match. Really a positive effect on the rest of the team. And several player conditions will be improved if you play with James McArthur in your team. So, as you can see there against West Ham United, McArthur is a red arrow but it's going because he's giving off like a positive vibe essentially and I was like what the hell does that even mean? So going against West Ham, the, you actually, I'm going to talk about the teams in a moment because they actually show the teams for some reason because it's technically considered our London derby so it makes perfect sense but with, is it London derby? I think it's London derby. If it's not, I, I don't really care to be honest. But anyway, James McArthur, the game focuses on him a lot more because of the fact he's now general, general James McArthur. Keep calling him McCarthy. Jane, General General James McArthur. That's his name. So, as a general, he comes into the team. Like, plays, basically, the only player I didn't really play normally is Martin Kelly and Brahimi, who I decided to play at right midfield. I really need to stop playing him there because he has no pace. And John Gooey Day actually started up front as well instead of Castanios. West Ham United, they had Adrian Collins, Ogbonna, Jenkinson, Creswell, Cullen, Noble, Obian. Obayang, Moses Valencia and Andy Carroll up front so last time he faced off against West Ham all he did was play the ball straight to Andy Carroll every single time he could possibly get an opportunity and they more or less did the exact same thing in this match as well but in the first minutes as usual we run down the left hand side because that is basically where all of, all of our attacks come from regardless of what game type I'm playing it's always down the left hand side I don't know why but it always is so yeah, the game kicked off, we basically ran on the left hand side, West Ham tried to do their best in terms of actually keeping possession of the ball, like trying to play proper football. In the fifth minute of the match, um, John Gridet gets a strike away, and it's a really good save from Adrian. And in the 41st minute of the match, uh, Kabai gets a strike away, really good save again from the goalkeeper. 52nd minute, McCarthy on the ball this time gets another strike away, ridiculously good save from the goalkeeper. And in the 77th minute of the match here, Wickham gets played for on goal, gets a strike away and another good save from the goalkeeper and then Kabai can't put in the rebound. And then in the 83rd minute of the match here, Kabai on the ball, waits for some players to make the run, Wickham does make the run, he gets for on goal, gets a strike away, another good save from the goalie. This time Guri Detti picks up the ball, tries to get a shot faint away, tries to play into Suarez, eventually Suarez does pick up the ball, gives it into Connor Wickham, who's for on goal, gets a strike away and another good save from the goalkeeper Adrian. And it was just ridiculous how many shots and strikes we had in this particular game. That's why I showed a lot of them because of the fact in the last minutes of the match, Fisher down the right hand side crosses it in to Connor Witt, into John Day actually. He misses the header, it doesn't come to anything. Referee blows the final whistle, 0 0 against West Ham United. But when you look at the stats, we deserve to win. We had 10 shots, 7 on target. Adrian got man of the match. And from match day 27, as you can see, the table is really close as there's only 4 points between the top 4. Chelsea are top with 57 and we're third with 55 I think. So if you have enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for more and catch you later.